Hey, well, good morning, everybody. Glad to see everyone here. Welcome. Hey, if you join us online, welcome as well. Hey, the Bible teaches us in Matthew 6.33 to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And he will, he will add all to us. So, hey, as his children, it's our job to obey, serve, worship, and praise his holy name. There's nothing better than the name of Jesus. So, would everybody please stand? Let's glorify him this morning because he is truly our way maker. You never stop working. You never. 
never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, cause you are bang, bang, miracle. Promise, promise, keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. In the kingdom of light, in the kingdom of 
Yes. Well, it was all around our area. 
and it was just hovering around in a radius around DeKalb over in western Bowie County. I could just see it. And I thought, what is that? I knew it was not good because it was darkness, and I could sense the darkness. But I sensed in the last couple of days, first of all, that we were supposed to pray against that and stand against it. I've been doing it, but I want to encourage you as our church and other leaders in our area, other pastors, we're going to get together and I'm going to share with them. We've got to stand against it. I realize that that darkness is that darkness of COVID. It's trying to come upon our area and trying to interfere in our area, trying to hinder what God is doing in our area. And we're going to stand against that. I believe the Bible says, go ahead. The Bible says that the, the gatekeeper opens the gate to those he wants to come in and he shuts the gate to those he does not want to come in. And we've been given spiritual authority, the keys of the kingdom of heaven by Jesus Christ to open doors that no man can shut and shut doors that no man can open. And we're shutting that door right now. We're going to shut that door. We're going to bind that door. It's not going to open up to this. We're going to stand in an agreement and believe. I believe that as as spiritual leaders, we have the authority, the right, and the responsibility to do that. You agree with me? All right. Well, you know, this is also a very special week in the fact that there's a lot more activity around the area at 8 o'clock in the morning, 7.30 in the morning, because school started back. And so we want to take a special time this morning and pray over all who are involved in our schools. And I know you parents are definitely involved, but if you're a student, you're a, if you're a student, raise your hand, hold it up if you can. Raise it up. Okay, keep it up there. If you're a teacher, administrator, or staff of any way working at the school, raise your hands. All right, we're going to pray over you because we believe we have the right and responsibility to do that too. We're going to pray over you. It's going to be a great year. It's going to be a blessed year. And what the devil means for harm, God's going to turn it around and use it for good. Father, we just lift up each one of these right now that are raising their hand. We pray over them. We bind the powers of darkness that try to come in to steal, kill, and destroy. We take the authority that has been given to us, the keys of the kingdom that you've given us, Lord Jesus, and we bind the strong man. We hinder him from working. We cancel the assignment of the enemy. We come right now in the name of Jesus, and we just loose. According to your word, we bind what what we don't want and according to your word it is bound in heaven and we loose what we do want and we it is loosed in heaven so we loose healing we lose health we lose strength we lose blessing and we bind all those other things in the name of jesus christ we declare it done we give you glory and praise amen amen okay you may be seated and here's this week's announcements Hi, and welcome to NCC. And if you're watching online, thank you so much for joining us as well. Before we continue with the rest of our service, we want to let you know what's going on right here at NCC. Students, don't forget, this coming Wednesday night is NCC's Back to School Bash, August 18th at 6.30 p.m. Make sure to bring your friends. Our Merge and Fuse students will have a worship, a guest speaker, foods, games, and giveaways. And NCC kids, Kids are having a splash bash, so bring a friend in a towel. Come kick off the school year with a back to school bash. Check out the website and Instagram for more info. At MCC, we have the best Dream Team volunteers. We can never say thank you enough for all that you do to serve here at MCC in our community. We love and are grateful in the way that you serve the Lord each week. Every year, we love to show our appreciation for all that you do. So, if you're a part of one of our MCC Dream Teams, we have a special night planned just for you. Please join us on August 29th at 5 p.m. right here at MCC. We will provide food and child care. All you need to do is register on our website by August 23rd. Again, our volunteer appreciation night will be Sunday, August 29th at 5 p.m. We love you and can't wait to see you. That's it for today's announcements. <laughs> if you'd like more info on anything you've heard today, you can visit our website or email info at maranathasdecab.org. And don't forget to follow us on social media and subscribe to our monthly newsletter. If you'd like to give your tithes and offerings, we have two boxes at the front, one at the back, and an iPad station if you'd like to give online. Now take a minute to say hi to someone next to you. And if you have kids with ages birth through eighth grade, you can take them to their kids' classes now. We'll be back in a few minutes with an exciting message from our pastor.
here today. <laughs> well, that's a good thing I got these tight shoes on and my socks will be off right now, I'm telling you. That was such a blessing. I've enjoyed so much already. Thank you for that word, Joseph, at the beginning. That was awesome. You know what I was so blessed about? You know, that we, you know we're a little shorthanded right now because Rose and Manny had to quarantine because of COVID. And uh, so they quarantined this week. But uh, I'm just so thankful that we had our youth band members be able to step up and step right in. That's a vision being fulfilled. And uh, we appreciate them so much. Thanks to Rose and Manny for working with them, getting them uh, prepared to step in. And so uh, that's, a, that's a great thing. I want you to turn with me to your Bible to Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9. I'm telling you, I, I've got a fire in my bones today. I just believe God's up to something special. And I'm excited to get in on what he's up to. I hope you came today expecting. If you're joining us online, I hope that expectation is going through the airways or whatever ways, however it gets to you. I pray it's getting there to you and you're expecting today too. Because I believe when we come with the expectations, God meets us at the point of our expectation. And I'm believing for some great things today. I have a message titled something that I hope you receive this. God has got a miracle for you. Say that. Only say me instead of you. God has got a miracle for me. Now look to your neighbor and say, God has got a miracle for you. <laughs> All right. Let me just ask, just kind of take a little poll, just kind of in general. How many of you could use a miracle of some sort? Great, great. We got the right message and the right crowd together today. That's exciting. You know, uh, as I shared a little bit about that vision, it came and I was, I was not sure what it meant. I thought it was just a force of evil. As a couple of days went by, I began to feel that, what, that it was about praying for our sickness, over sickness and health and for our area. And, for, for, and I began to see how uh, the enemy was reaching in with little fingers and touching areas and people were being affected. And, and let me just ask this, how many in here today have in the last two weeks been affected in some way by COVID? Maybe a friend, a relative. See, a, a lot of us have. Schools are, and, and it's a lot worse in other places, but we're going to put a stop to that here. We're not going to allow that to come in and engulf us. I'm believing that we're going to have a normal great school year this year. So we're going to stand, and we're going to stand in agreement and believe that that's going to happen. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 27, it says, When Jesus departed from there, wherever he was, when he departed there, two blind men followed him, crying out, saying, Son of David, have mercy on us. And he ignored them. Did you notice that? And when he would come into the house, the blind man came to him and said, and Jesus said to them, do you believe I'm able to do this? So see, they followed him on in the house. He didn't really pay attention when he was outside out there, but they followed him in and he said, do you believe I'm able to do this? No, oh, so he's asking them to make a, like a commitment, don't you think? He's asking them to make a statement of faith. Do you believe I'm able to do this? And they said to him, yes, Lord. And he touched their eyes and he said, according to your faith, let it be done to you. I almost call this message, help, I need a miracle. <laughs> but, and that would have been fine, except I like this other one better. God has got a miracle for you. I remember sharing one time, it's been a few years ago. And if you heard the, this illustration, then just bear with with me on it, but a man bought a brand new computer. You know, you buy a computer and you think, man, I got a computer, I'm good now for, and for long you gotta do what? Buy a new one, because that other one you bought will not download the things you need to download. The operating systems are not good anymore, so you gotta go buy another one. So the man bought a brand new computer, and you know, every time we buy another computer, we always like to supersize it, don't we? Get a little more on it than we had the last time. So he had everything on this computer, all the bells and all the whistles. He wasn't real computer literate. He just knew how to kind of make it work. So he got it all set up, put it all together, plugged all the wires in, set it on, plugged in the power strip, and he hit the power button. And he just sat there. He thought, man, I got a dud computer. He hit the button again, hit the button again. Nothing happened. He sat there and he was just fussing and fuming, hitting on that button, hitting a button, and nothing was happening. And his little 12 year old son walked in and pushed the power strip button, turned it on, and the computer started whirring. <laughs> now, the moral to that story is everything works better when it gets turned on. 
It works better when it gets turned. Did you know life works better when we get turned on to it? You know, if we're not turned on to life, we're just existing. We're just going through the motions and it's not much fun. And I've had, I struggle with that sometimes because I get in a rut. Someone said one time that a rut is just a tombstone with both ends knocked out of it. I mean, a, tomb, a grave with both ends knocked out of a tomb. And so it's just, I don't want to be in a rut. I want to be on top of things. I want to be moving in the things that God is moving and doing the things that God is doing. I want to walk in the realm of the Spirit, in the atmosphere of the Holy Spirit. Now, there's a lot, a lot of talk about atmosphere. And so, an atmosphere is good and can be good. We won't believe in a positive atmosphere. But, you know, it wasn't a positive atmosphere that turned that computer on. Was it? It was a physical turning it on, connecting it to the power. So there's nothing wrong with talking about atmosphere, anticipation, excitement. That's not what made the computer work though. You gotta turn on the power. Things always work better when they get turned on. People work better when they get turned on. Life is better when we get turned on to it. So I ask you today, are you turned on to life? Are you just going through the motions? It's so easy just to go from Monday to Friday and then have a weekend then go through Monday through Friday. I find myself, my day being uh, my week being basically two days, preparing for Wednesday and preparing for Sunday. And the rest is just preparation days. And so sometimes I catch myself going through the motions till we get to Wednesday or Sunday. So I believe life is more than just an event here and there. I believe every day is the day we walk in the presence of God. Every day is the day when we walk in the miracles of God. Every day is the day we walk in the excitement of the things of God. How many, how many already knew that? You knew that, didn't you? I'm, I'm talking to myself. But you see, sometimes we have to be reminded. Today I want to talk to you about how to walk in the power of God, get turned on to the power of God, the ways of God. And then that releases the miracles of God. In today's verse, you notice the healing of the blind man reveals some important principles about how to unleash God's power and to receive God's miracle. It was not in the positive atmosphere that was around them. It was not in anticipation. It was not in excitement, but it was in the faith. It was in the faith. You know, when Peter walked on the water, there was a lot going on around him, but it wasn't the excitement around him that caused him to walk on the water. It was, in fact, the things around him literally caused him to sink. He jumped out in faith, and then he began to look at the atmosphere around him and the circumstances around him. And how many of you know that circumstances can rob you of your faith? When you look and you see that dark cloud, you think, oh, I need to go hide and I need to, get, to get, take cover. The Bible doesn't say that God blesses those who cut and run. It says he blesses those who stand forward. I love what we, what we talked about a while back when we talked about how that David, David didn't cower down from Goliath and hope he wouldn't see him. The Bible says he ran toward him. You see, we run toward the enemy. And we fight with a fight of faith. We run toward it. The thief on the cross, it wasn't the atmosphere around there that saved him. It was the fact that he called out on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and a miracle happened. He had faith. The paralyzed man, they put through the roof because he couldn't get to Jesus. So they opened up the roof and dropped him down. That was an act of faith. So what we do in an act of faith tends to release the power of God in response to our faith. There's one reason some people didn't see a miracle. Here's what it is in Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. Jesus said, because of your unbelief, for surely I say to you, that if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here and move to there, and it will move and nothing will be impossible for you. Nothing is impossible when we operate in the realm of faith. Know this, faith not only moves mountains, faith moves God. God is waiting, anticipating, and desiring for us to operate in faith, ask in faith. He asked, oftentimes he would ask people, what is it you want me to do for you? Well, he could tell that the man was paralyzed. He could tell that the people were blind. He could tell the man had leprosy. What? He said, what do you want me to do? That goes right along with the scripture that we claimed a few months back in, in one of the new years about asking, seeking, and knocking. What are you asking Jesus to do in your life? What are you believing Jesus to do? I believe when we take a step toward God in faith, he takes a step toward us with his miracles. 
We all need them. This is an important principle. I want you to hear this now. You must know the will of God to pray in faith. You understand what I'm talking about? You must know the will of God. So often we just pray hope prayers. We shoot a bunch of prayers up there and hope some of them stick. Know the will of God because praying in faith is praying in agreement with God's will and that releases the the abundance or the supply or the miracle to come our way. We've got to know what God is up to. We can't just go out and say, well, I've just believed, I'm, going to, I'm just going to believe for this. I'm going to start praying in faith that it's going to happen. Praying in faith involves knowing God's will. Have you ever been praying about something and you prayed and you wanted God, but you said, I don't know if that's really God's will or not. So you try to talk God into doing what you want him to do. It's hard to pray that way. It's hard. My faith cannot arise to praying what I want, but it is easily arising when I pray what I know God has said is going to happen. We've had so many times in our lives when God has given us his will about something and something would rise up against that and look like it's never going to happen. It looks like it's impossible. But we said, God, you said it. It's your will. We're going to pray it. We're going to believe it. We're going to stand on it. We're not going to back up. We're going to confess it. We're going to speak it is so, even though it is not so, because your word is sure. So when God gives us a word on something, we can stand on that word and believe that word and not allow something to come steal that word from us. Praying in faith. Do you believe it's God's will to bless you? Well, that's such a big, broad thing. Yes, it is. But we've got to start somewhere. Do you believe it's God's will to heal you? Do you believe it's God's will to meet your needs? I'm telling you, we battle these things. Don't think we're immune to these things. We battle these things too. We've had sickness and we prayed and prayed and it didn't seem like it was working, but we didn't stop praying and believing. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, I have battled through some sickness. I have preached on a Sunday morning when I almost passed out into service because I was sick as a dog. I didn't have COVID. But I, I, had, I had achiness, I had fever, and I was just, and by the time I got through, I could barely sit down, but I was not going to give in. So often we just get a little symptom. We give in, say, oh, I'm getting sick, so we quit. That's when the battle of faith starts. The battle of faith starts when you see what is so, but you know it's not supposed to be so, so you stand in agreement with the word of God and say, I will not put up with this. I'm not saying don't take any medication. Treat the symptoms, but believe for the source to be God is going to heal. God's going to meet your need. We've had physical needs, spiritual needs, financial needs in our lives before we did say there's no way it can happen except God. And God says, I got this. When God says, I got it, that's done. What God says is the final word. I love that song about the final word. God has the final word. God's word is God's will. Knowing God's will produces miracle working faith. These verses that we read this morning show that it's not mere prayer. Now now hear me out on this, okay? Because the Bible says all men ought to pray. So I'm saying we should pray. But it's not just prayer. It's not just prayer. The blind man said, son of David, have mercy on us. That was a prayer. But he went on in the house. And they could have turned around and said, well, I guess God doesn't answer prayer. They followed him in. They were persistent. They said, They prayed, and then they followed it up with faith. See, if they'd have turned and walked away, they wouldn't have got healed, would they? He'd not go running down and say, hey, why'd you quit? I could have healed you if you'd just come on in. No, they followed up with faith. That's why the Bible says, seek and you'll find. Knock and and it'll be open to you. Ask and you'll receive. There's a following up. Prayer is the beginning, and we continue it with faith. Sometimes I hear people say, Well, I prayed about it and nothing happened. And in the second breath, you can almost hear him say, but I didn't really expect it to. Well, they told me to pray about it, so I did, but nothing happened, just like I thought. You know, they don't say that, but it's in the back of their mind. Praying in faith is praying, believing that it's going to happen. That's why you got to know God's will, because I don't want to be praying against God's will, but I do not want to be letting God's will lost because I don't have faith to believe it and bring it in. Do you think God ever has a will for you, something good for you that you never received? 
You can bet. You said, no, if it's God's will, he'll get it to me. Did you know the Bible said it's God's will that none should be lost and all should be saved? That's God's will. And he made it available to everyone. But not everyone's going to be saved. You say, you mean God's will is not going to be done? No, he's not going to override people's will. He gives us a will, and he says, this is what I want for you, but you're going to have to battle it. God wanted Goliath defeated, but he needed a David to go out there and exer exercise his will so that God's will could be accomplished. God could have struck Goliath down out there, but he used a person, a little boy, the most unlikely candidate, the one who only had a slingshot with five stones. Somebody said, why did he bring five stones? Did he think he wasn't going to hit him with the first one? No, he brought five stones because he heard he had four brothers. Just in case they wanted to get in on a fight, he was ready for them too. I like a person of faith like that. I'm bringing some extra stuff in case somebody else shows up because I'm not going to lose because I'm walking in the battle of faith and I'm ready, I'm prepared. People say, I prayed and nothing happened. And so what did they do? I got more people praying. And we think the more people we got praying, the more likely it is to happen. That you can have a thousand people praying, but none of them have any faith. It's not going to do any good. Praying is, is making them Christ. J Jesus said to the disciples, I mean to the blind men when they came in, he said, do you, they said, Jesus, son of David, tell us, come. He said, you believe I can do this? Once they followed him in, he said, those guys got faith. Those guys, they wouldn't quit. Now, understand. They didn't follow him in because they could see him. They had to listen and poke their way around. They, but they were not going to lose. They were listening for his voice. And when they heard that voice, they went to it. We need to be continually listening for the voice of the Father so we can know where to go to and what to stand for. And they followed him in there. They were not going to leave him alone. The Bible talks about the, the lady who came knocking on the door in the middle of the night, the neighbor who came knocking on the door. And the judge said, said man, leave me alone. Finally, he said, because of... The persistence, for how, because of that persistence, he said, I'm going to give her what she wants. Now, God's not asking you to come begging and beating on his door, but he wants you to be persistent and to stand and believe. Faith stands when everything else falls. Sometimes faith has to stand when all reason fails. Faith stands when reason fails. It's not faith in prayer that gets you answered. Well, you get a lot more people praying. It's faith in the object of our prayers. It's faith in the faithfulness of God to answer our prayers when we come to him in his will. Oh, it's great to have people praying with, be sure they're praying in agreement and be sure they're praying in faith. I'm definitely not belittling prayer, but simply saying that not all prayer is faith. Some of it's just wishful thinking. I think I'll just throw these out there and hope God will answer one or two of them. We must believe that God will do for us what we claim. Verse 29, what did Jesus say? According to your faith, let it be done to you. Hebrews 10, 38 says, the just will live by faith. It also goes on to say that we must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them who do what? Diligently seek him. We must continually, diligently seek him. Continually going after him, believing in him. Too many prayers are offered in faithlessness. They're just kind of scattershot up there, you know. He said, according to your faith, let it be done. Matthew chapter 18, Jesus said to the centurion, centurion had a daughter he was having prayed for. He said, go your way. As you have believed, so be it done to you. And his servant was healed. This was the one who had the servant. The other one had the daughter. Go as you believe, so be it done. In fact, Jesus said, okay, I'll come heal your servant. He said, you don't have to come heal my servant. I'm a man of authority. I understand authority. You have authority. You just speak the word. It'll be done. And Jesus said, I've never found faith like that, even among the, my own people. He was a Roman centurion. Jesus said, okay, go your way. It's done. As you have believed, so will be it done unto you. So often we make our decisions based on our five senses, the sense realm. God gave us five senses and they're good. I like to hear. I like to see. Don't you? I like to feel. I mean, I, I like those senses. They're good. But I don't want to base my Christian walk on my senses. I don't want to reason myself out of the miracles of God. And sometimes my senses go awry when I see 
what I hear God saying. And when I hear what God's saying, it says, my mind says, that can't happen. When, when something negative is spoken into me, that negative tends to try to overrule the positive. Especially if someone says it that is authoritative. If a doctor says it. If an economist says it. If they say it, it tends to weigh on my mind, on my senses. But you see, feelings are part of the sense realm. And they're the voice of the body. And walking by feeling allows our body to control us. I don't feel very good, so I think I'm just going to lay out. If every time I didn't feel good, I stopped doing something, I wouldn't be doing much sometimes. I'd be staying around. Sometimes I had to battle through my feelings. You ever wake up in the morning and don't really feel like getting out of bed, but you go ahead and do it because you know you're supposed to? That's the same thing. We battle through our feelings. See, feelings are part of the sense realm. They're the voice of the body, and we let our feelings rule us. Our body is in control. Reason is the voice of the mind, and walking by reason allows our mind to control us. That can't work. This faith stuff's not real. God's not really listening to my prayer. There's too many people out there. God's not paying attention to me. God doesn't really care about me. You see, we let our mind run away. Instead of going by what the Word says, the Word says He not only knows you, He loves you, and He knows everything about you from the time you were, before you were born to the time you'll die. And even the hair on your head are numbered, so He has to keep pretty close count, doesn't He? I don't know about you, but every time I take a shower, He has to redo His. <laughs> whoops, whoop, there, Steve lost some. I better adjust my count. Uh, he knows. It says He knows when a sparrow falls. Are you not more important than a sparrow. Instead of walking by the voice of our mind and the voice of our bodies, faith is walking by the voice of God, the Word. His Word is His voice. What He says, it is true, being led not by the body, not by the mind, but by the Spirit. Strangely, most people would be glad to do something if God told them something hard to do. If God came to you and said, if you would roll a peanut down the aisle on Sunday morning, I promise you, you'll be wealthy, healthy, and strong. If we knew that was true, we'd do it. But God didn't say you have to do something foolish like that. He says, believe my word. Trust in me. Have faith. Walk in confident faith. Yes, we must move and understand that the Bible says have faith in God because why faith moves God. To receive the miracle God has for us, we must act in faith. Faith must be the dominant principle in our lives. That means I believe God. I don't care what anybody says. When somebody says, well, I don't think that's going to happen. Do you believe that could really happen? I say, what does the Bible say? It's always safe to say, what does the Bible say? If you're a King James, you say, what saith the Scriptures? That sounds more holy. What saith the Scriptures? I'll tell you what the Bible says is true. It doesn't matter what anybody else says. And I know there's a lot of naysayers around. There's a lot of agnostics. There's a lot of atheists. There's a lot of people saying, the Bible is not a relevant book. They're liars. They're deceived. They have no idea what they're talking about. They're wrong. Never, ever be at the mercy of those who downgrade the Bible and Christianity because you're the overcomer. You're the conqueror. The Word of God is true, and you'll never be ashamed when you stand for the Word of God. They might make fun of you. They may ridicule you, but that's okay. Let them do it. They perish. We prosper. God's word is true. Stand on it. Believe it, no matter what they say. Three facts about faith. They are so simple, I almost feel embarrassed sharing them. God is able. <laughs> Jesus said, do you think I'm able to do this? <laughs> we wouldn't have come in here and followed you in our blindness if we hadn't thought you were able. Of course, we believe you're able. That's why we're here. That's why I pray, because I know God is able. Understand this, God is God. There is no other. I don't understand how I got here. I don't understand. If I could understand God, there wouldn't be much to him. My little finite mind doesn't understand a lot of things, but I know this, God is able. He is omnipresent, omniscient, and he's omnipotent. In these texts, we say omnipotent. <laughs> he is potent and he's able. So in anything that comes your way, just remember this, God is able. 
You say, well, yeah, I know that. <laughs> yes, God is able. That's easy to say. Jesus said, do you believe I'm able to do this? God really does want to help people. Hebrews eleven six 6 says, without faith it's impossible to please him for he who comes to him must believe that he is and that he's a reward of those who diligently seek him. You cannot come to God except by faith. Why? Because you've never seen him in person. You've got a lot of voices out there saying there is no God. And there's a lot of people out there saying that all this stuff, it just happened. Let me tell you something. It takes a whole lot more faith to believe what they preach than what the Bible preaches. There cannot be order without someone to set things in order. Have you ever noticed order does not come automatically? You have to set it in order. Disarray comes automatically. Leave your house for six years and come back and see what's happened to it. Things just fall apart. Things quit working. There cannot be design without a designer. God is able. You must believe that he is whatever you need. Is he able? Yes, he is. Can he do it? Yes, he can. Get that in your mind. Think about it. God is able. God can. Now that brings to the next question. We know God can do it. God can do anything. If you believe in God, obviously you think God can do anything. He's God. He's all powerful. He can say black is white and it'll turn white. He can say gravity's not existent and we'll start floating around this building. He's, he can say earth stop and it stops. And there's no great tidal waves, no tsunamis to wash it. He can say, earth back up, and it backed up. He's God, and he's your God, and he's your father. If you've been born again, he's your heavenly father, and a father watches that for children. I was just reading this week in Luke where it says that we as earthly fathers know how to give good gifts to our children. Do we not think that our heavenly father knows how to give good gifts to us? Of course we do. We know that. God wants to give us good gifts. The devil says God's out to get you. God says, I want to get you because I want to bless you. I want you to enjoy my presence. I want you to know me, worship me, enjoy my presence. I want to spend time with you. So God is able, but second thing is God is willing. Do you believe I can do this? So be it done. I'm willing to do it. One person came to Jesus and said, I know you can do this if you want to. He said, you believe I'm willing? He said, yes, I believe you're willing. He said, I am willing. Do it. Here it is. Be healed. Look, our prayers are not trying to wrench something out of the hands of an angry God. Our prayers are getting what God is reaching toward us in faith so that we can by faith receive what he has. So if you need a miracle today, don't think God's holding out on you until you say the right system of prayers until you pray just exactly right or until you get enough people praying or until you, you go through some kind of catechisms or things or you go through some kind of rigor, rigors and things or rituals. He's not waiting on that. He's waiting simply for us simply to believe and trust and, and call those things that be not as though they be. God is willing. After we put our faith in God, then we get, know that he is able. We can't stop there. We must believe that he's willing. Anyone who believes in God knows that he can do anything because the Bible says nothing's impossible with God. But knowing God can and believing God will are two different things. God's got a promise for you. If you will call in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be saved. You will not be saved without meeting that condition. Call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sin. So see, by faith, you receive what God says is true and it happens. You don't get saved by your parents getting saved and passing it on to you. You don't get born again by going to church and getting baptized. You get saved by doing what God said to do. Ask Jesus to forgive you. Come into your heart. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. There's a condition. You call on the name of the Lord. God wants all to be saved. In Matthew chapter 8, it says the leper came to him and worshiped him saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Now, you ought to understand what leprosy is. Leprosy is like stage four cancer on steroids. It ate your body alive, and you, you just died a scabby, pussy mess. It ate you alive. Your fingers and hands fell off, and you just died. But he said, do you believe I'm able to heal you? And Jesus said, Lord, I, I mean, the disciple said, uh, the leper said, Lord, I know you can. I believe you can. 
I believe you can heal me. He said, Lord, if you're willing, you can heal me. Jesus put his hand out and said, I am willing. Be cleansed. Now understand, Hebrews says this, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, back in those days, right now and forever. If he's, and he's got, Bible says God is not a respecter of persons. Do you need a miracle? God's not a respecter of persons. He's not going to give Stephen one and not give Michelle one. Oh, I don't want, I don't want to give Michelle a miracle. She's got enough going already. I'm going to give it to Stephen. I'm not, I'm not, he's going to hear your prayer because he has no favorites. Well, he actually does. The Bible says we're all his favorites. We're all his He says he keeps his eye on us. He watches over us. When we, when we came home from the hospital with Krista, you know, the firstborn, you got, somebody gave a T-shirt that said, God loves me so much, he can't keep his eyes off of me. And we as parents, boil that out. We love so much we couldn't keep our eyes off of them. You know how parents do with little babies? They don't do anything. They just lay there and once in a while they twitch or something. You know, and they, oh, look, it moved. Oh, that's so, we sit there for hours staring at them. Like they're the only baby that's ever come in this world. Our baby is more, our baby is a better baby than, oh, look, look, look. And we said, God does, God says, look at my child. You're so special to him. Did you know you're special to God? You really are. You're special to him. He said, I don't feel special. It's not based on how you feel. There's a lot of times I don't feel special. A lot of times I say, God, I don't see how you put up with me. How can you like me? But he says, I do. I like you and I love you. There's a difference in liking and loving. The Bible commands us to like people. Doesn't command us to, I mean, to love people. Doesn't command us to like people. There's some people I love and I want to get saved, but I don't really like them. I don't want to hang out with them. God not only loves you, he likes you. You know how I know? Because he wants to hang out with you. He says in Hebrews, come boldly into my throne room of grace to find help in need. I'll be there. I'll meet you there. Come in there. Your open invitation to enter into the presence of God. And all we got to do is just shut things off and get quiet and say, God, I want to enter your presence right now. He says, come on in. The door's open. There's never a busy sign. There's never a, a, a out to lunch sign. He's always waiting, ready for us. Jesus said, I'm willing. And immediately the leprosy was cleansed. Yes, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he's willing to hear and to heal the leper, he's willing to hear your request and meet your need. I hope your faith is rising right now. I hope all of a sudden something inside of you is saying, you know what, I believe, I believe God's going to do what I need. I believe God not only can, I believe he's, I know he's can, I believe he's willing. And something's rising inside of you. And when your, your faith rises up to meet his need, your problem is answered. And your solution's on its way. I believe he hears and heals the leper, he will heal your, hear your quest and heal your sickness and meet your need. The third thing, God is able, God is willing, believing is seeing. Oh, no, you got that wrong. It's seeing is believing, right? No, I don't believe half what I see, but I see I believe, and then I see. I believe that God is able. I believe that God is willing, and I begin to act like he's already done it. Look, like I said a few weeks ago, look, if you're praying for rain, you're not carrying an umbrella, that's not believing. <laughs> that's a simple little illustration, but you know, when you, you pray for something, believe it. I love what Kenneth Copeland shared years ago in his ministry when he finally got out of that old broken down car held together by bailing wire and bubble gum. And God told him he was going to give him an airplane. And he said, all right, I get an airplane. And God said, okay, start acting like. He said, well, what am I going to do? He said, so he, he went and bought. Back in those days, we didn't have iPads to fly by. You know, had to go get sectionals and fly by and plot your courses. He went and got him a little case and bought him some sectional maps. So he said, oh, man, you got an airplane? He said, it's on its way. Why you got that? Because I'm getting ready. When I get it, I want to be able to fly. I don't want to know where I'm going. You see, do what you can do, but it's all up to God. You just get ready for it. Abraham said, my name is Abraham. I'm the, I'm the father of nations. They said, how many kids? You guys said, zero. Man, you got to go check. Their old wife, she's a little too old to bear kids, and you're 100 years old yourself. 
And he said, I'm Abraham, the father of nations. You see, the Bible says, because Abraham believed God, it was account to him for righteousness. He believed God. He trusted God. And every time he said his name, he was declaring his faith in God. And look what happened. The Savior came through his seed, through his line, through his lineage. Believing is seeing. Mark eleven twenty four 24 says, Therefore I say unto you, whatever things you desire when you pray, what? Believe that you receive them and you shall have them. The verse is clear. When we believe, we receive. The world says seeing is believing. The Bible says believing is seeing. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop. You never stop working. I love that song because sometimes I don't see it, but I know God's working. Sometimes I don't feel it, but I know God's working. So I keep my mouth working in agreement with what I don't see and what I don't feel because I know God's working behind the scenes. There is that battle of faith that comes. And oftentimes, I'm mean, just let you be forewarned. Oftentimes, when you pray for something specific, it looks like it gets more impossible. You got a financial need and you're praying, oh God, we got this financial need. We need this. We got to have this. And you're praying for God. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. And your refrigerator breaks down. You say, God, we're praying for a financial need. Now we got to buy a fridge. We had part of the money. Now we got to, God just getting you in a place where you're totally dependent on him. It happens sometimes. I, you know, used to when I was teaching on healing, I would, I would start out the teaching. I would say, well, I kind of hate teaching on healing because every time I teach on healing, I get sick. What a <laughs> statement of faith that is. And finally, one day, I, was, I said that, and God's, I mean, right in the middle of the people, God just kind of said, you really, do you remember what you just said? And I said, you know what? That used to be what happened. I would pr preach on healing and teach on healing, and I'd get a sore throat afterwards, and I'd feel sick. Well, that's not going to happen. That's the devil coming to me trying to get me to stop teaching on healing. I tell you, from that, I've never gotten sick after preaching on healing in it since that time. That was just opening the door. You shall have what you say you have. I was saying it. <laughs> now, there's so much we could go to today, so much further we could go. We don't have time to go into all of it because we're going to spend some time ministering in prayer here in a moment. But I just want you to know, faith must be in what God says, not what our senses tell us. People tell us, symptoms tell us, your body will tell you, doctors will tell you, economists will tell you, news people will tell you. We must dare to believe what God says regardless of what other people say. We've got to believe what God says no matter what anybody else says. What does the Bible say about it? Get in agreement with God's word. If you'll do that, things will happen. It's then that you'll see your prayers answered, your needs will get met, and you'll receive the miracle you're believing for. Let me give you a little side note here. Beware of situational faith, situational believing. You know what that is? That's when I get in a situation, I'll start believing God. No, it's, that's not the time to try to build faith when you've got a big problem looking at you. It's not the time to build faith when the mountain's looming over you. You need to build your faith in the small time, in the good time, when everything's rolling good. Continue to build and implement your faith. Don't wait till you need a miracle before you start believing in miracles. I mean, it's better to believe it then than never, but it's not the time to do it. Don't wait for the situation to demand it before you start it. Today's the day you need to start building your miracles. Today's the day. Even when I have a need, I'll work up the faith for it. No, that's not right. Wait till you have a need. In the realm of faith, believing is seeing. Look what Jesus said about that. John chapter 16, until now you've asked nothing from me. Nothing you've asked in my name. But now ask in my name and you will receive that your joy may be full. This, there's these people out there that don't know God that think God doesn't want us to have joy. Jesus said, ask in my name and I'll answer it to you so your joy may be full. He wants you to be full of joy. Joyful, full of joy. Luke eleven nineteen 19 says this, I say to you, ask it will be given to you. Seek you will find, knock and it will be open to you. I love the way the New Living Translation says it. And I say to you, keep on asking and you'll receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking. And you'll find, keep on knocking and the door will be opened. It's a keeping on thing. It's not a one-time thing. Real quickly, I'm going to go over a couple of hindrances to receiving your miracle. 
Because you see, there are hindrances. Ephesians chapter 4 says this, This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk. In the futility of your mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Those things will hinder you're getting your miracle. One what? Living like the world lives. Come out from among them, the Bible says. Thinking like the world thinks, your understanding being darkened. Most of the world is walking in darkness right now. Understanding like the world understands. See, judging everything based on your own understanding. You can't do that. That'll hinder your faith. And the last thing is seeing what the world sees. Seeing like the world sees. See, the world see, sees it and says, that can't happen. There's no way. It's just too bad. And i tell you, if, if I weren't living in faith, I would look at our, our world today and I'd say, it's, it's too bad. It's gone too far. God, even God can't straighten this mess out. Let me tell you, it takes one act of God to straighten this mess out. One, one swing of awakening across our land. That's all it takes. Don't think the world is in control. God's still in control. He said things are going to get this way at the end, so why are we surprised when they are? He said when they get this way, take heart. Look up. Your redemption draws nigh. Let me, we may be 30 seconds from leaving this place. And that's the greatest miracle of all, isn't it? Then all those other things won't seem like anything, will they? Okay, today as we kind of wrap this up, we're going to spend a little time wrapping up here. And I don't want to oversimplify this, because, but I don't want to overcomplicate either. Sometimes we as Christians overcomplicate. As a child of God, think about this. Your need makes a demand on God's supply. God has a supply. He says he owns everything, right? He has, he's able. He's all-powerful. He can do anything. You have a need. Your need makes a demand on God's supply through faith. The same way your debit card makes a demand on your account at the bank. Do you ever put your debit card in? It's like, well, sometimes they do that. But I mean, you know, normally you put your debit card in, you say, I don't doubt that money's going to come because I've got money in the bank. So I don't doubt that, I don't put it in there and say, oh, I just pray that this debit card works. Now, maybe if it's somebody else's, you might, you know. <laughs> or if you've been having trouble with it, maybe. But, you know, in a normal situation, you take that debit card, you stick it in there, and you have no doubt it's going to work. As long as you remember the four digits, it's going to work. Why do we not have the ability to see that in a spiritual standpoint? My need makes a demand on God's supply. Why? Because he said, according to his riches and glory, he will meet all our needs. Do you have a need today? then you should say, my need is making a demand on God's supply. I'm not trying to oversimplify, but it's just that way. The Bible says it. My God will supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. He took care of all your eternal needs when Jesus died on the cross. The Bible says his, by Jesus' stripes, we were healed. He didn't say we will be healed. We are healed. We were healed. It's a done deal. So we need to start pr stop praying and begging God to heal and say, God, I stand healed by the stripes of Jesus Christ who died 2,000 years ago on my behalf and therefore I walk in health based on the stripes that he bore, not what I'm doing. Look, I say all the time, God, I know I'm not good enough to get this prayer answered. <laughs> Never, ever go to God and tell him what all you've been doing so he'll answer your prayer. You've not done enough, I'm sorry. You see, the Bible says very clearly, God, for Christ's sake, forgives our sins. For Christ's sake, he answers our prayers. Because Jesus died on the cross, he bled out his whole life totally so that you could become a friend of God, you could become a child of God, so God could meet your need, you could be a friend and not an enemy. Some people think God treats his enemies better than he does his, his family. You have a right to have your prayers answered, not because of what you've done, except the fact you received what Jesus did. And it's applied to you. God made him who knew no sin to be sin so we could become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I don't beg God for anything because, and I don't try to be righteous, I am righteous because of what Jesus did. He took my sin and gave me his righteousness. And he did the same for you. If you've been born again, you're just as righteous as Jesus. That sounds so sacrilegious, doesn't it? But that's what the Bible says. 
What says the scripture? Your need makes a demand on God. Supply like a debit card makes a demand on your bank. You can have a million dollars in the bank, but if you don't ever use your debit card, you'll live like a pauper. If you never demand any of that out of the bank, you'll live like a poor person and die and go in broken poverty. There's a lot of Christians walking in spiritual poverty, physical poverty, because they've never tapped into what Jesus did for them. They've never understood how to operate in the realm of faith and receive. They've never understood how to take that that's been laid aside for them and apply it to their lives personally. God's miracle provision comes with the new birth. It's not something you earn. It's not something you work for. It's not something you have to desire for for 20 years. You have miracle-producing faith inside of you. The Bible says God has given us the measure of faith. If you've been born again, you've got more faith than you need to get your miracle today. You have miracles and provision in your heavenly account. I'll meet your need. Remember this. Simple aspects of faith. Living in a continual state of faith is knowing God is able, knowing God is willing, faithful, knowing that you have what you ask for. Then you can release the resources of heaven and turn on the power of God in your life. Whatever the need may be, healing, finances, wisdom, peace, direction, fulfillment, comfort, strength, companionship, the Bible says that we are complete in Jesus Christ. Have you found your completeness in Christ? Oh, one other thing. Knowing God is able, knowing God is willing, knowing that you have what you ask. Fourth thing, Ephesians 4.27 says, give no place to the devil. Don't let him have a place in your mind. Don't have him a place in your thoughts. Don't let him come in and take a toehold in your life because a toehold will turn into a stronghold and it'll rob you of your faith and it'll take away your, your provision. You'll get to the place where you just believe that, well, God will do it for somebody, but not for me. Do not give an enemy a place. Shut the door. Cancel the assignments. Withdraw permissions that you've granted. And you know, John recorded this in uh, chapter uh, 21. He said this, there are also many other things that Jesus did in case he didn't do enough. And which, if written down one by one, I suppose even the world would not even contain the books. In other words, John was saying, you know what? Jesus did so much more than we've written down here. We just got a thumbnail sketch of what Jesus did in the three years of his ministry. So don't think, well, I don't see that written. Jesus, look, Jesus is not bound by anything. Well, I never saw Jesus, I never heard of Jesus doing that. It doesn't matter. Someone said one time, you believe Jesus can heal cancer? Yes, I do. You believe he will? Yes, I do. Well, show me a scripture that says he heals cancer. I said, well, how about this? The leper. Well, no, that doesn't say cancer. That says leprosy. How about the blinded eye? No, that says, look, if he can heal a blinded eye. How about Lazarus raising from the dead after he'd been in the ground several days? Well, that doesn't say cancer. Let me tell you, it's a whole lot easier for God to heal someone, seems like to me, than it is to raise them from the dead. But him, it's all the same. <laughs> it's all the same to him. Why? Because God is able. He knows no limit in time or space. I mean, if the body's decayed, he'll just put it back together. He created it in the first place. He can redo it. God can heal it or he can resurrect it either way. If all the things that Jesus did, John said, man, I don't even think the whole world could hold all those books because he did so much more than they recorded. More miracles that were recorded. Remember the woman had the issue of blood? She had been to every doctor she could go to. She was poor. They had, they had abused her. They had given her all these things and none of them worked. But she heard about this guy who was named Jesus and she saw a crowd and someone mentioned Jesus. She said, I got to get to him. I got to get to him. I've been sorely abused. And Jesus was on his way to heal a sick man's daughter, a, a, a man's sick daughter. He was on his way and they were going through and the crowd was just pushing all against him and carrying on and she just tried her best. She said, if I can just hold my own in this crowd and she was wiggling through the crowd and weaving through the crowd and getting up. She said, I just touched the hem of his garment. I believe I'll be healed. What's that? That's faith. 
That's persistence. That's knowing he's able and believing he will. If I can just get to touch the hem of his garment. And he walked by and she touched him. And he said, who touched me? Uh, you think she might have shrunk back a little bit? Uh, the disciple said, what do you mean who touched you? We're in a mob. There are people pushing and shoving, touching you. He said, no, 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 no. Get this. Somebody withdrew from their account. <laughs> Somebody touched me, what? With faith. There was a lot of people touching Jesus, but she touched him with faith. Her need made a demand on her spiritual account, and she really didn't even have a right to have it. She didn't, but he said, you touched me in faith. And so she was healed. And then they went on to the place where the sick daughter was, and guess what? He waited too long. She already died. Too late. Too bad, Jesus. Might as well go somewhere else, right? But remember, Jesus is able and he's willing. And so he walked in there and they said, too late. She already died. Go on. He said, no, don't worry about it. She's just asleep. And, you know, sometimes being asleep means they're dead. But he didn't mean she's dead. He meant she's just sleeping. They said, oh, they laughed, made fun of him. Made fun of him. Because he said that, he said, okay, all you non-believers making fun of me, get out of this house. I don't want you around me. I will not live in the presence of faithlessness. Sometimes you've got to get the unbelievers out of your life. Those are speaking negative to you. Those are saying God can't do it. Those are saying God won't do it. Those are saying God could do it, but he won't do it for you. God's, in other words, they're going against the scripture saying God is a respecter of persons. Get them out of your life. Shut those voices up. Don't let them come speak to you. Move them out. He moved him out. He said, okay, I'm walking back there. And he said, hey. And he spoke in Hebrew or Greek. And he said to the little girl, rise up. And she rose up. And they walked out. And everybody just started shouting and believing and clapping and so happy. You see, it doesn't matter if they're sick or dead. It doesn't matter if you're sick or dead. It doesn't matter if your bank account's zero or below zero. God is able. Now, I want to tell you something. If you're believing today, and, and don't, don't, don't take this wrong, but if you're believing today for a financial miracle, you've got to be a tither to, to qualify. Huh? Yeah, the Bible says that. A lot of people come to us and want to say, would you pray for a financial miracle? And say, do you tithe? No. Well, then the Bible says you're robbing from God. And he says, if you'll tithe, I'll remove the curse from your finances. But if you're robbing, if you're robbing, you're cursed. He said, try and see in Malachi. He said, try and see. Test me and prove. I'll open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing on you that you won't even be able to receive. If you're needing a miracle today, I believe God's got one for you. I believe God's going to answer your prayers and give you the miracle that you need. Do you need a miracle? Do you? God's got one. Remember these simple little aspects of faith, knowing God is able, knowing God is willing, knowing that you have what you ask for. We used to sing a song. I was thinking about that when I was preparing this message. Say, God's got a miracle for you. Yes, God's got a miracle for you. Keep sowing seed by faith. Believe God's got a miracle for you. I want you to bow your head right now, right there where you are. And I believe we're going to see God do some great things this morning. Because you know what? We're here. We're in a place of faith. We're in the atmosphere of faith. But we have faith, real faith. We're trusting and we're believing God. And we're believing that God's going to do what he said he would do. I'm trusting that God's going to show up and the miracles are going to abound. I believe God's going to meet your need today, whatever that need might be. And we're going to stand in just a moment. And we're going to just call on the Lord to meet those needs. If you're watching online and we call out that need you have, you stand right there where you are. You need to be healed. You need to be delivered. You need to be uh, ministered to in any way. God wants to meet your need and minister to you. This morning, well, I want to do it this way. If you do need a financial miracle, a financial miracle. I want you to just come down and we're going to pray over you. Michelle's going to come. Others are going to come if we 
feel the need to. We're going to pray over that. Who needs a financial miracle today? Come on down. Someone? You say, well, I'm not a tither. So I'm going to start tithing God. <laughs> We're starting out with the hard one first, aren't we? Come on down. We have a, our church is a wonderful church of givers, so I'm not trying to talk anybody into doing anything what most already do. But I just want to share with you. We're going to pray over you. <clears throat> All right. We're, Jimmy and Reba are praying. I want you to agree with us, okay? If you have some faith out there to, to stretch forth, you believe God can do that? I believe it can too. I'm telling you, we've seen so many miracles. Uh, let me just share one, one financial miracle. The Bible says, give will be given to you, pressed down, shaken together, running over men, giving you your bosom. You know, we paid our building off in about a little over three years. It was supposed to be paid over and off a lot longer than that. But uh, at one time we had a need and someone had a need in the Philippines to uh, build uh, uh, the roof on the church got blown off. And so they needed a thousand dollars. God said, send them a thousand dollars. Remember this, give by command, not demand. There's too much demand out there. God says, give according to what I say. So I said, we're going to send that $1,000 to them. We sent $1,000 to them. Before they got the check and even cashed it, somebody stopped by the office, doesn't even go to church here, and said, I want to give you a check for the building fund, $100,000. <laughs> you saw the check, didn't you? Let me tell you. God is not bound by what men are bound by. So they're praying that their home can be paid off before they retire. Yes. You want to retire pretty soon? Yes. Okay, then. <laughs> your need, uh, your need uh, makes a demand on God's account. Father, I thank you for the faithfulness of these two. They have been faithful to you, and you're faithful to them, and you're always more faithful than we are. And I pray for Jimmy and Reba right now. We pray for their finances to in some way, however you choose to do it, to miraculously multiply. You're able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask and all we think. And I pray that their home be paid off before they retire. And I thank you that they will come to let the redeemed of the Lord say so. They will come and share that testimony when it happens. And we'll all give you the glory for it, Father, because you're able to do and we give you glory and praise for it. Amen. Amen. All right. Most of you know that uh, Jerry's home right now, but three weeks, at least three weeks a month, he's in North Dakota working, and then he comes home for three weeks, and he's believing God's going to do something different in their, in their work situation and meet their need without causing a need by it. <laughs> and meet your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And by the way, these are faithful givers, I'm telling you. God blesses and God has blessed them and they bless others. Father, I thank you right now that according to your will, your word, according to their faith, it be done unto them. You're gonna open up doors that no man can shut according to your will, according to your purpose. We release that in their lives in Jesus' name right now. We thank you, God, that a phone call is gonna come, uh, an ad's gonna come, a person's gonna con contact them that has the ways, the means, and gonna open up a door that is a very effectual and right door in Jesus name so be it amen and the devil you are bound from their finances you will not hinder in any way in Jesus name amen Carrie has a, a vision of a business and she's praying for God to show her what he wants to do and how he wants to do it to give her the means and the way to break that. Father, we thank you. To, she's able to do that and to break through in that in the name of Jesus Christ. We release your will, your mind and your plans into her so she will be able to walk according to what you say, 100% of what you're saying, what you're doing and she will see your hand work and she will know exactly what she's supposed to do, when she's supposed to do it and how she's supposed do it and you will provide for her in Jesus name we thank you and praise you amen amen so be it mm -hmm. 
Susan Howard come, they have some financial decision to make according to some property and things in their lives, and they're just wanting direction in that. Father, I thank you that you have a plan, and your plan works. And I thank you you're not hiding that plan, and you'll reveal it to Howard and to Susan right now. We just pray for clarity, for understanding, for spiritual insight into how you want to do these things, and it will work so much better for the good of, of their lives. God, you'll work it out so it'll be best for them. We thank you for giving them wisdom and guidance and counsel. Your word says if we lack wisdom, ask you, and you will give us that wisdom, and you will not upbraid us. Thank you, God, that that wisdom is coming. You're going to show them knowledge of witty inventions when it comes to preparing and uh, disposing of properties and whatever they need to be done, God. We thank you. You're going to give them wisdom and bless them accordingly in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Who needs a miracle of healing? Come on down. Come on. We're going to take time to minister to those who need ministering to. Okay, come on. We're praying for mother's heart. It's a 90-year-old heart, and God's working it perfectly. Father, I thank you right now that our bodies do not wear out till you say it's time to go home, God. We thank you for her strength. We thank you for her mind, for her will, for her emotion. Thank you that you're administering health right now. We speak to her heart to be healed and to be strong in Jesus' name. We speak it and believe it and receive it, and we know the word and we believe the word. We declare it before it even happens in Jesus' name. We believe it's done. Amen. Amen. I wouldn't have done that if I hadn't have known you personally. I'm not going to tell how old you are. <laughs> what are we praying for? Your heart? Yes. Another, we need to pray for this heart. Oh, yes. Without a little blockage. Oh, yes. I see it melting right now. Yes. Father, we speak right now to this heart to function because you made it to function. We declare the enemy has no place. We pray right now that whatever enemy has messed up, torn up, we can't declare you to fix it right now and leave it alone in Jesus' name. We pray openness to those arteries that are, that are blocked. Pray for that valve to be healed and restored in the name of Jesus. It's been prayed for. We agree with those prayers and we declare it no matter what the doctors say. We say what you say, Lord Jesus, by your stripes, Jesus. We pray and believe that Jerry was, he is healed and that she was healed and it's done in Jesus' name right now. So be it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, yes. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just want to thank you for this precious little life. We just pray over Zeke. And we pray healing and restoration. We pray for your power to manifest for total, complete healing for every part of his body to line up with the word of God. And we bless you and we thank you. We pray for this mom and this dad and we thank you for their faithfulness and for the prayers that they prayed. We know those prayers were not offered in vain, but they're offered and you've received them, Father. The tears that have been cried have not been forgotten, but that you've kept them in a bottle and you remember them and they're precious to you. We release your healing and your anointing and your power in Jesus' name name. We declare it. We believe it. We receive it. Amen. Amen. pray for Shelly. She has a, a colon disease that's affecting her blood pressure and no medication can handle it. Uh, thank you, Lord God, that uh, you have a special medication for this. It's called the blood of Jesus Christ. It was shed for our sin and the stripes that Jesus bore on the cross, uh, before the cross, for our healing. We receive that right now. We loose healing in Jesus' name to be received. God, you've got a miracle for her, and we receive that miracle right now according to your will and your plan. So be it done. So be it done. According to her faith, so be it done. We apply our faith to yours, and we declare it in Jesus' name. It is done. He is willing. He is able. It is done. Amen. Amen.
this is your day. This is the day the Lord had made. We do rejoice and glad it. Father, I thank you that Reba's faith has not wavered. Though years have gone by, we continue to agree with her that her knees are healed. Yes. Her knees are restored. Yes. Yes. The, the ligaments, the filament, the nutrients, all being restored into her knees right now. The lubricant in Jesus' name, healed in the name of Jesus. Right now, we release it. We declare it by faith. We receive it in Jesus' name. So be it done. Amen. Amen. Move your knees around a little more. Move them around a little more. By faith, move them around. There you go. Move them around. Move them around. Move them around. Do something you couldn't do. <laughs> Dance. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. How many believe God gives us a powerful and a sound mind? The Bible says that he gives us a sound mind. So right now we just pray and we just believe right now for a perfectly sound mind in the name of Jesus Christ. Mind to be still and be healed in Jesus' name. Be restored. Devil, you're a liar. You're a thief. You're a you're stealing and you cannot have in the name of Jesus Christ. You cannot have this right now, this mind. It is healed. It is delivered from your power. It's delivered from your, your stench in Jesus' name. Be healed. Everything being con connecting, falling into place. Arteries opening. Whatever is failing is being restored in Jesus' name right now. Lights are coming on right now in Jesus' name. Yes, Jesus' name. Alice is healed and restored in the name of Jesus Christ. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in you in Jesus' name. Memories restored. Thoughts connected. Everything healed in Jesus' name. A new mind in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Mm. So be it. So be it. standing in, in place for Laura's baby right now. We pray for total healing, complete restoration in the name of Jesus Christ. We declare it. And by faith, we're believing and asking and receiving in Jesus' name. So be it done. the miracle. Playing from Mindy's mom. She's having a lot of pain in her back. Is your mom a believer? Okay. Father, I thank you that Mindy's mom is a believer in Jesus Christ. Therefore, she has a right to this healing because it was purchased by you, Lord Jesus. And we pray right now for that back to be healed, for it to line up for every part to be healed and released for any muscles that are tight and tense for any nerves that are being pinched we pray that it will line up and be released and healing would come in the name of Jesus we declare it and we receive it and give you glory thank you Father let it be done in Jesus name we will hear the testimony in Jesus name Amen anyone else maybe I didn't call out something but you have something you want to be prayed for God's got a miracle for you. Keep sowing seed by faith, believe.
broken. Iris is a nurse, and she feels sometimes like totally inadequate, which she is. But the power of Jesus Christ is not inadequate. We pray right now that she would go and minister in the name of Jesus health, that she would be an ambassador for Jesus Christ to release healing and health in people wherever she goes and wherever she touches. It will be a supernatural healing, something doctors can't explain, but we'll know what it is. We release that anointing on her in the name of Jesus. Let me ask you this. You believe Jesus can do that? You put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ to do that? You believe with your wife that he can do that? You put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ and him alone. Father, you heard these two. They put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ and him alone, not depending on their own skills, their own ability, their own ways, only in you, Lord Jesus. So therefore, they put themselves in a place where they're totally dependent upon you. You said you will never leave, you'll never forsake. Those who put their trust in you and their faith in you will never be disappointed. And we believe that, we receive that in Jesus' name. So be it done. Amen. Go in Jesus' name. <laughs> Anyone else? If you need anything, come on down. Be ready. We're going to get our children's workers some relief here in a minute. I know she's not here. Okay. We're going to stand in the gap for Esteline. Esteline needs a healing. She needs restoration. Her body is not producing blood like it should. She's having to go get transfusions every so often. So, Father, we are standing in the gap in agreement. As uh, Patty stands in for Esteline, we thank you. It's as though Esteline were here because prayer is not limited to time or space. And our prayers, our hands laid upon Patty are like laying upon Esteline in the name of Jesus Christ. We release your power to flow into her body, through her body. And we just release it in Jesus' name for her body to function properly, for the blood to be produced, for the marrow to produce the bones, and the bones to produce as it's supposed to, that her body will just flow freely with the blood that she, her own body is creating. In Jesus' name, we believe it and we receive it, and we thank you. We thank you. We, re, we rebuke that curse in that blood, just as the woman who had the issue of blood, we pray for this issue of blood to be totally, completely reversed in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, you may not have come to the front. You may have got your miracle sitting there in your seat. That's just as big a miracle, right? I mean, a miracle is a miracle. You might get it driving home in the car today. You might lay down tonight and say, whoa, wait a minute. My shoulder's not hurting anymore. I didn't even know I got healed. If you do, would you please let us know that? Because it's always good to hear testimonies. We've had it happen so many times. We were praying for one lady one time, and we were praying for her heart because her heart was just all messed up. And we were praying for her heart, and they went back and tested. The heart was clear, and they said, hey, you used to have a hiatal hernia. It's gone. <laughs> And the, the doctor said that. We didn't say it. They brought the x-ray to her daughter and said, her, we were going to have to operate on her hiatal hernia. It's healed. Her heart's healed, but her, her hernia is healed also. Speak right here. Let me get this. This is a, a testimony for his dad. Um, like two weeks ago, I pray for my daddy because he got uh, he have a stroke and uh, yeah. my sister they take to the hospital and uh, he stayed in there for maybe a week and the doctor told my mom my daddy uh, I said well just take it home because I can't do anything for him so they take it home and He's walking now. Amen. And he can eat by himself. And I know God is, is doing yeah. something. You, you came down, we prayed for him, didn't yes. we? We prayed for his dad a few weeks ago for a stroke. And you know what? He was nowhere around, but he got healed. Thank you for sharing that. We appreciate it. All right. 
Father, we want to thank you so much for everything that you do, for your love, for your blessing. God, we thank you that you're able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask and think, and we give you the glory and praise for doing it. Direct us and guide us through this week, through this time as we stand against all these things that are trying to come against us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.